Hello again, everybody. I am RM2K Dev, and welcome to the next episode of my Polishing Your Game series. Um, first, let me tell you, we'll be using Game Maker again, just for demonstration purpose. This just allows me to rapidly prototype these ideas and show them to you. But please rest assured, you can uh, you can take these ideas and use them in any N engine that you're using, um, custom code. You can use them basically anywhere because I'm just going to be explaining some core concepts to you guys. Uh, secondly, uh, I'd like to just let you guys know that these videos are unplanned. Um, I have an idea of what I want to talk about, but I haven't really got any script or any dialogue pre-written down to tell you guys, except for this statement that I'm telling you guys right now. Um, and with that said, let's begin. So what I've got here is a really basic game. Um, this is pretty much just any standard top-down adventure game. Um, if, if it's lagging on the video a little bit, just uh, ignore that. This is just the software I'm using to record, but um, it's pretty standard. We have the physics system again in place here. Um, I've also gone ahead and implemented all of the features that I discussed in the last video regarding smooth input. Um, so it's not super abrupt. It is quite nice. It is nice and smooth. Um, and a lot of developers would get to this point and say, hey, this looks good. Um, and yes, it does look good, but there's things that we could do to make it look a little bit better. Uh, so this video, we're going to be talking about the camera system specifically. Um, and with that said, let's get started. So what can we do to make this camera look a little bit better? Um, currently, it, it looks pretty good. Um, and like I said before, a lot of developers would get to this position in their games and say, hey, uh, this is good. Let's move on to the next feature. But Let's pay a little bit of attention to detail here, and what can we add to this? Um, I think if we make the camera sort of lag behind the player a little bit, that would that would be a nice effect. Um, also, let's pretend we were playing a shooting game, and when I right-clicked, we shot a bullet into the direction that I was right-clicking. Uh, currently, there is no bullets in this because I haven't made any shooting game mechanics here, but if you just pretend I'm right clicking now and that there was bullets shooting out in that direction, that's cool. Uh, let's add some more to that. So the first thing I want to show you guys is uh, this little chunk of code here. Um, now basically all we're doing is we're creating an object for the camera to track and we're positioning that object where the player is standing right now. Uh, and what that gives us is the effect that you guys just saw. The camera is basically thumbtacked to the player and it doesn't do anything other than follow the player exactly to where the player was. So I think, uh, let me comment this out. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to go through these camera tricks line by line with you guys. So this first uh, simple idea that I'm, I'm going to introduce you guys to is to basically separate the camera from the player. And what I've done to do that is I, is I have a player object and I have a camera object. Now the in-game camera is, ta is uh, set to follow the object of camera and not the player. The reason for this is it allows me to separate the camera from the player. I'm able to move the camera away from the player uh, while still maintaining the player's position uh, a lot easier than I would had I have the camera following the player. Um, so a good example is my sh what I said earlier, we're going to turn this into a shooting game. So when I right click, the camera will jump ahead of the player. Now, what I've got here is the angle that the character is facing. And we want to move 50 pixels in that direction. This function length dir x basically allows us to get there. Okay, so, um, and again, this function length dir y does the same thing, but this time it's in the y direction. And these two combined basically give us the x direction and the y direction. Sorry, they give us the x coordinate and the y coordinate. 50 pixels away from the direction the character is facing. Now, if we were to set the camera's position to be the player's position plus this offset that we have here, we've created this offset, uh, that will allow us to separate the camera from the player. I'll demonstrate that like so. So basically what this gives us is the ability to move the camera independently of the player. And you can see that by, the, by this little red dot that I've uh, created earlier just to show you guys. That's 50 pixels away from the center of our player in the direction that the player is facing. And again, this only occurs when I'm holding down the right mouse button because we're using offsets. 
um, those two offset values. And this looks a little bit funky right now as I do this, but you'll see where we're headed with this in a second. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is very simple. We're going to use the lerp function that I introduced to you guys in the last video. Now, just a recap of what lerp actually does. It allows us to go from this variable to this variable stepping at this interval. So we want to go from the camera's current position to the player's position plus the offset that we def defined up here in steps of 0 0.1. And what this will do is this will basically make the camera lag behind the player a little bit as we move and will also make it jump ahead of the character but it will do it in a nice gradual effect speeding up and slowing down as we as we fire these events of right clicking and if we're firing weapons or whatever instance you're doing this in so as you can see the camera now slowly catches up to the player and you can see that by the little red dot tagging behind the character just a little bit now i think this i personally think that this makes the uh the game look and feel just a little bit better um, and as you can see when we stop it has that nice little catch up effect it takes a second for the camera to catch up it looks nice um, it's just another level of detail that you can add without needing an artist uh, the next thing is when we're shooting so let me pretend that I'm shooting ah that's quite nice I like that um, so basically what's happening there is when we right click the camera is trying to catch up with that little red dot and it's doing it in that step interval of 0.1 now this uh, looks quite nice, um, so whatever direction that you're shooting in, the camera will always be facing that direction just a little bit more to give your player some a little bit more view on that side. And when you stop shooting, the camera returns to its default position of just trailing behind the character a little bit. Uh, this is quite, quite good in top-down shooting games, but this can be applied basically anywhere. Um, so once again, I uh, wish you guys luck in implementing this into your own games and let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you have any uh, ideas or uh, experiments you'd like me to test, just let me know and uh, you can reach me on Twitter and on YouTube. Uh, so again, good luck guys and have fun.